you drop on your way up the ladder so you can move faster. You forget you'll need them again when you get back to being a woman. The lovely Betty Davis was an iconic American actress renowned for her distinctive talent and captivating screen presence. However, although years have passed since she left our world, it seems her daughter does not want her to have a blissful rest in the afterlife. The legendary actress was known for a lot of things, many of which are controversial, but no one ever expected her own daughter to reveal such dark secrets as she did years after her mother died. Keep watching as we uncover the full story. Ruth Elizabeth Davis was born on April 5, 1908, in Lowell, Massachusetts. She was a daughter of Ruth Augusta and attorney Harlow Morrell Davis, but her parents divorced when she was 10. Betty and her younger sister were raised by their mother. Growing up, being the cute girl that caught the attention of bypassers, Betty was just an average girl doing what most girls do. It didn't take long before she changed the spelling of her first name to Betty with an E, after a character from the French 1846 novel La Cousine Betta, which tells the controversial story of an unmarried middle-aged woman who plots the destruction of her extended family. Unbeknownst to Betty, this character embodied the archetype of the typical femme fatale. And like destiny played out, it would soon become synonymous with Betty herself, as she would eventually go on to portray forceful and intense characters in numerous films. Growing up, her father was quite distant, while her mother was pious and prim. Davis rapidly learned two things. Good girls waited for marriage, and marriage was not easy. According to Davis, her parents made each other miserable, and she was quite pleased when they ultimately broke up. At 13, her mother moved her and her sister to New York City, using her children's tuition money to enroll in the Clarence White School of Photography. During her time in New York, Betty joined the Girl Scouts, but her burgeoning passion for acting soon took center stage. At the age of 18, she was captivated by Peg Entwistle's performance in a 1925 production of The Wild Duck. She later reminisced that it was witnessing the talent of the 17-year-old Entwistle that made her want to go into theater. She tried out for George Cooker's Stock Theater Company in Rochester, New York, but her performance didn't impress him. However, he did offer her a first paid acting opportunity, a brief role as a chorus girl in the play Broadway. Three years after seeing The Wild Duck, director Blanche Yurka selected Davis to portray Hedwig, the role she had seen Peg Entwistle play. Following performances in Philadelphia, Washington, and Boston, Davis made her Broadway debut when she was 21 years old with Broken Dishes, followed by Solid South. Despite Davis's rough start in Tinseltown, she did eventually land a contract with Universal Studios. In 1931, when she was 23, Davis caught the attention of a cinematographer who admired her lovely eyes and subsequently cast her in her film debut, The Bad Sister. Unfortunately, this movie was not the star vehicle that Davis had hoped for. It was such a disaster that Universal dropped Davis, leaving her on the hunt for work. And that wasn't the only source of trouble in Davis's life. She landed various minor roles in different films, but none provided the significant breakthrough that could truly propel her career forward, until she crossed paths with another movie studio, Warner Brothers. She joined the film studio after being noticed in the production of The Man Who Played God. Following this triumph, Davis would go on to make 14 films over the next three years. In 1934, Warner Brothers loaned Davis to RKO Pictures for Of Human Bondage, a drama based on W. Somerset Maugham's novel, which would turn out to be her critical breakthrough. Davis received her first Academy Award nomination for her role as the rude, cold-hearted waitress Mildred. Throughout the rest of her career, she played many other strong-willed, even unlikable women who broke society's norms. The following year, Davis received her first Academy Award for her performance as a troubled young actress in Dangerous. She then appeared in The Petrified Forest, alongside male actors Leslie Howard and Humphrey Bogart. After a difficult period with Warner Brothers, during which she was suspended for declining roles, she sued the studio and spent some time in England. Subsequently, she returned to Hollywood and was offered a greater income and a wider range of parts. After winning her second Oscar for portraying a rebellious Southern belle in the 1938 film Jezebel, Davis experienced a string of critical and commercial triumphs, 
She tackled roles such as an heiress confronting a terminal illness in Dark Victory and portrayed Elizabeth I in The Private Lives of Elizabeth and Essex. Throughout the 1940s, she continued to deliver acclaimed performances. However, alongside her professional growth came numerous controversies that left an impact on her personal life. Remember how Davis grew up with strict parents who were stuck in an unhappy marriage? It appears those experiences left a mark on young Betty. Determined to have a different kind of relationship with her husband, Davis nonetheless found herself marrying four times, ultimately raising her children as a single parent. At the age of 24, she married her high school sweetheart, Harmon Nelson. Like many young girls in this period, Davis played by the book, keeping her virginity for her wedding night. But Nelson proved to be dictatorial and cruel. Davis became pregnant twice during her marriage to Nelson, and he instructed her to abort the baby both times. In the 1930s, that wasn't just emotionally terrifying. Additionally, it was quite risky. Their relationship soon faltered. But do not pity Davis too much because she is not so innocent. Eventually, it was Nelson who filed for divorce after he caught her cheating. During her marriage to Nelson, Davis starred in the drama Dangerous and fell hard for her co-star, Francho Tone. However, Joan Crawford, another silver screen icon, got to Tone first, and the couple soon announced their engagement, causing a bitter rivalry between Davis and Crawford that would last for years. Nelson later divorced Davis for obvious reasons. In the following decades, she got married three times. Her second husband, businessman Arthur Farnsworth, died in 1943. Two years later, Davis married her third husband, William Grant Sherry, with whom she has a daughter named Barbara. Their marriage only lasted five years, and Davis would soon marry her fourth husband, Gary Merrill, her All About Eve co-star. They adopted two children, Margot and Michael, but even this marriage ended in divorce. It seems as though marriage was not destined for Betty Davis. While she never experienced the fairy tale happily ever after with a man, she did find fulfillment in her role as a mother to her children. However, unlike many women who would cherish their children and strive to be exemplary role models for them, this celebrity icon was different. So different, in fact, that her own biological daughter would make disparaging remarks about her. Despite the occasional criticisms from the press, and perhaps a few individuals disliking her for what they perceived as insincerity, nobody could have anticipated the shocking revelations made by Davis's eldest daughter, Barbara Hyman. In a series of YouTube videos titled A Long Day's Journey into Light, Hyman discloses exclusive insights that portray her mother in a less favorable manner. While the videos were originally dated in 2015, it's speculated that they may have been recorded as early as the late 1990s. Yet they have resurfaced and garnered renewed attention. Hyman, now 75 and a born-again Christian, claims that her mother experimented with witchcraft and cast charms on her adversaries from her bed. She even stated that she witnessed her transform into a satanic figure with a satanic face and long claws on the end of her hands. Hyman presented these stories more than 26 years after her mother died of breast cancer, implying that she is still furious about her toxic relationship with Davis. Well, we will never know if this is the truth. It is no news that even while Davis was alive, she and her daughter never saw eye to eye. In 1985, Hyman published her tell-all book about her mother. This memoir was a complete barn burner. It effectively ended Davis and Hyman's relationship. After it was published, the mother and daughter never spoke again. Why? According to Hyman, her mother was a violent alcoholic who frequently harassed her children. Hyman claimed that if she misbehaved, Davis would pretend to take too many drugs before locking herself in her bedroom while Hyman stood frightened outside. She claims that Davis would then return the next morning, smugly commenting, I hope that taught you a good lesson. Betty Davis's later years were marked by intense family tensions, sparked by her daughter's publication of the tell-all book, which was then countered by Davis' own memoir disputing its claims. These tensions reached a climax with her daughter's subsequent response, revealing that the drama persisted until Davis's passing. Betty Davis suffered serious health issues in the 80s, including breast cancer, four strokes, and paralysis that worsened following a mastectomy. However, Despite her deteriorating health, she maintained her customary strength and control. 
turning down her son's visit to spare him the sight of her frail state. When Davis's cancer returned in 1989, she endured her final days with dignity and died on October 6th, leaving behind a legacy of resilience. Betty Davis's will sparked controversy since she divided her fortune between her adopted son Michael and her assistant, excluding her daughter Hyman from any inheritance. Perhaps this is why Hyman is still bitter today because as a Christian, shouldn't you all be forgiving? That was it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Do you believe Hyman and her wild accusations? Let us know in the comments section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.